we believe that the five innovation platforms around which we've based all of our research, so DNA sequencing, robotics, uh, energy storage, artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, they have all gained so much more traction during uh, or, and because of the coronavirus than we could ever have imagined. Now, we believe they're on exponential growth traje trajectories already. It's just, uh, it's happening, it's, it's being compressed. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at ARKG. This is ARK Invest Genomic Revolution Fund. ARK Invest is the fund who put the $7,000 price target on Tesla for 2024 with a bull case of being $20,000 per share. Split adjusted, that $20,000 would be $4,000 per share for the year of 2024. We will see how that goes, but their base case is $1,400 per share for the year of 2024, and it's looking more and more real. At the beginning, they got laughed at in 2018 and 19, but now people aren't laughing so much. Give this video a thumbs up if you find it useful. Subscribe for more videos just like this, my portfolio updates, and much more. And let's dive right into the video now. Returns in the last five years have been 445%. In the past year, it's really picked up and exploded. We see gains of 186% for their ETF. And from the coronavirus lows, we're looking at about 281% from the lows. The management fee is 0.75% per year. The returns in the last three months have been 32%. Last month went up a lot, 24%. In six months, 76%. Year to date, we see 143%. When we take a look at top 10 holdings, the first one is CRISPR, and this is the one I'll be focusing on for the majority of the video. We see Arcturus at 8%, Invite at 7%, Pacific Bioscience, at 7%, Twist Bioscience at 5%, Teladoc at 4%, Caredex at 4%, Iovent Biotherapeutics at 3%, Exact Sciences at 3%, and Selectus at 3%. CRISPR is the leader in potential gene editing. We're talking about the ability to potentially edit out genes that have precursors for cancer and other diseases. Now, it depends on the direction of what regulations are in place, for the future of this company. But right now, CRISPR is leading in gene editing technology. So if you ever want to invest in potential gene editing, you're gonna go with CRISPR. ARKG currently holds 7.6 billion in holdings. That's how much investors have put into this fund and how much have been dispersed over these companies. Now, I personally am looking closest to CRISPR. If you would like a diversified approach in the genomic revolution, then you can definitely go with ARKG. This would be my favorite ETF to go with for a diversified approach and get a piece in the genomic revolution. Now, I believe that there's more potential upside in the gene editing realm and gene therapies when comparing that to the run-up that's already happened in Square and Tesla. Tesla has more than 10X in a year. Square has more than 4X in a year. So, you know, the likelihood of another 10X from here on Tesla and Square is far lower than CRISPR or Teladoc. And you're gonna see CRISPR and Teladoc are also in ARKK. So, in my opinion, it's best to go with either ARKK or ARKG if you wanna go more heavy in the gene revolution. I personally wanna go a little more heavier into ARKG or into CRISPR itself. Those are my two favorites and we'll see what happens. I may put that as the biggest holder in the new Double My Money Challenge coming up in January. During any risk off period, I say innovation gains traction during tough times. And talk about tough times. Innovate, the reason it gains uh, traction is because innovation solves problems. Better, cheaper, faster, more productive, more creative products and services. We believe that the five innovation platforms around which we've based all of our research, so DNA sequencing, robotics, uh, energy storage, artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, they have all gained so much more traction during uh, or and because of the coronavirus than we could ever have imagined. Now, we believe they're on exponential growth traje trajectories already. It's just, uh, it's happening, it's, it's being compressed uh, much more than we expected. One thing that I've, I've observed is that you've hired a, a very diverse group of people. Was that deliberate and why does it matter to your success? Well, the first, yes, we have a diverse group of people, a very young group of people generally, mostly because they have one foot in the new world. Their education 
uh, th their education gave them the opportunity to experiment with CRISPR Cas9. You're, you're not going to find that in the traditional as analyst space out there. When others are running away and it's conventional wisdom that something is not going to take off, take a closer look at it yeah. and, uh, and see if you can find any merit. I'm not saying there will always be, but if there is merit as others are dismissing the possibilities, that's where you're going to find great success. I'd like to hear from you how you would describe CRISPR-Cas9 for those who, who may not have that great uh, uh, knowledge of it. The way I like to describe CRISPR is as a, as a, a tool for editing the code of life. And what does that actually mean? Well, it's, a, you know, it's basically a way to make very targeted changes to the DNA in cells that allow scientists to manipulate genes, uh, not only one at a time, but you know, multiple genes at once, and do things ranging from changing a single letter in the code of the DNA of a human cell to altering 20 or 30 genes in a plant cell that allow the plant to grow under drought conditions and be resistant to pests. So those are just a couple of broad ranging examples of what can be done with CRISPR. With my, my coworkers in the laboratory, we saw the data that uh, we were collecting for the function of this protein and looked at each other and said, you know, this is just uh, extraordinary. This is a protein that can be told where to go in a DNA sequence and programmed and con that can be controlled by the scientist now because we understand how it works. I'm wondering if, if you think that uh, CRISPR could um, be approved as a therapeutic intervention uh, to rid us of disease, to actually cure disease. And uh, if so, which kinds of diseases or are we talking about all kinds of diseases? Well, the short answer to your question is yes. I absolutely think it will be approved as a way to correct disease-causing mutations and, and in principle even to cure uh, genetic diseases that in the past were untreatable and certainly not curable. There's a woman named Victoria Gray who has been in the news lately whose um, sickle cell disease has apparently been cured by genome editing. It's quite quite extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And she seems to be in good health and uh, you know, so far, so far so good. And it's been a number of months uh, that she's, uh, since she received that treatment. This is a one and done kind of treatment where the corrective mutation is introduced into the cells where it's needed, and then the editor goes away and the cells are happy and uh, you know the person is then disease free. I highly suggest you go watch the full interview with Kathy Wood and the co-inventor of CRISPR, CRISPR, Jen. Now we take a look at CRISPR's stock. In the past year, we see that it has gone up 172% from the March lows we have gone up roughly 325%, so a triple from the March lows. Now, the market cap is sitting at 12 billion, and let's take a look at the revenues for the previous years. First, what you'll see is the revenue being very drastic, 5 million in 2016, 41 million in 2017, 3 million in 2018, 290 million in 2019. And they had a big breakthrough with the sickle cell healing process that we saw just like in the interview we saw previously, their mission is to bring transformative therapies to patients with serious diseases. Now in the previous quarter, they finished their cash position of being up to 1.4 billion and with a market cap of 12 billion, that is very solid, compared to 945 million in the previous quarter with an increase of 420 million. And it was mainly driven by their public offering which was 484 million. Now what you'll see here is total revenue for that quarter was 0.1 million for the third quarter of 2020. And you're thinking, what is this? This is pennies. It's because the revenue comes from collaborations and it's in lump sums. As an example, 211 million 
came in the third quarter of 2019, which was from a collaboration agreement with Vertex. This video is purely for entertainment purposes only. Do your own due diligence and research into ARKK, ARKG, and CRISPR. I personally am heavily interested into CRISPR therapeutics for disease preventing because there is massive upside potential and market cap to be gained from the new breakthroughs and the new healing that they're able to accomplish with gene editing. Thanks so much for watching. Gives you a thumbs up if you appreciate it or found something valuable here. Subscribe for more videos just like this one, more stock breakdowns. I'm gonna be bringing you new stocks and new ideas to invest in to expand your wealth exponentially. I'll see you in the next video.